Chanel. Thank you so much, Chanel. I really appreciate you uh, going through all of those detailed instructions for all of our classmates this evening. Uh, I am Chris Williams, and we are going to paint like a demon tonight. We're going to paint really fast. We have a really fun, quick little project. Um, this is something that can be easily personalized and changing out the house color, doing words with or without, maybe putting your house address. Uh, there's so many things we could do with this one, and we're, I think it's time to just go ahead and start right in. So Chanel, if you want to take me overhead, I think that would be great. Um, for those of you that registered for the class and saw the supply list, you probably noticed that there was also a pattern that you could download. Here is a picture of what it looks like when you print it out on eight and a half by 11 paper. And what I did to get ready for class this evening was I took my pattern, actually traced it out onto a sheet of tracing paper because this enables me to see through the paper and onto the surface that I am going to transfer my design on. Before I transfer the, the design, this is a canvas panel that I'm using tonight for class, but you could also paint it on a stretched artist canvas. But a canvas panel, there's nowhere really to hang on to it while you're painting without getting your hands into paint on the edges. So I just used some painter's tape and made some paint tape loops uh, on the back. And I actually taped my canvas down to the back of a illustration illustration board. So that way I have the board to hang on to while I'm painting close to these edges. Um, and then also too, like I said, this enables me to kind of look through, see where I can line up my edges to my canvas. Then I used a sheet of artist graphite paper and a stylus. And by placing this in between, sandwiching in between the pattern sheet and my surface, and using the stylist or a dead ballpoint pen, I'm gonna raise this up so you can see, I've transferred just basic little pattern lines here for our simple little house. And our house is kind of framed around the edge with these really fun little kind of daisies. So let's go ahead and get right into our project. I have a sheet of wax paper palette here and I'm going to squeeze out onto my palette some look at me blue. For those of you at home that might be painting along with me this evening, you can go ahead and squeeze your paints out too. Those of you that are just watching and going to paint along at your leisure later, that's perfectly fine as well. The second color I poured out was a little bit of wicker white. So I have look at me blue and wicker white, and I'm going to use a three quarter inch flat brush. This is a pretty wide brush for um, a quick area to cover in. And what I'm going to do, if you wanna see these two colors, obviously we could maybe think that I'm getting ready to do my outside my sky area. So one tip, if you want, I did put on the list some painter's tape. If you like to paint with painter's tape and not worry about trying to keep this edge nice and clean, go ahead and put a little painter's tape around this outside edge here while you are painting the inside sky area. Or you can do like I'm gonna to do tonight and just paint very carefully when you get up close to these edges. So what I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to use both colors on my brush at the same time. And I'm going to just kind of pat, pat, pat the side of that brush up into my wicker white. And then the side that I currently do not have paint on, I'm gonna brush or stroke up into that blue. So I now have blue and white together on that flat brush. And again, that's look at me blue and some wicker white. And I'm going to just kind of do a quick little stroke here. I'll raise it up a little, see a little bit, you can see closer. One stroke, another stroke, flipping my brush around. And I'm just kind of overlapping some of those strokes, picking up more paint as I feel like I need it. And I am just kind of getting that soft modeled effect being careful to go up next to my house, to the chimney, next to the roof. And I want this to look, when I'm all done, I want this to look a little bit modeled. You can see that there are still brush strokes in this background. I'm raising up my hero here, if you wanna take a quick look at that while you are painting. You do want to see those brush strokes and those brush marks. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. So let's go ahead and fill in all the way around the house and this little framed area with both wicker white and look at me blue on my three quarter inch flat brush. 
and I'm just kind of, this is what we often call slip slapping. I'm slipping and I'm slapping that brush. And I'm also kind of being very careful right up against those pattern lines or the house lines. And we're just gonna get a little bit of this blue modeled background in around our house. The second thing we'll do is we'll start working directly on the house, which is kind of the hero of our project today. I'll be painting the gray house tonight, just like in my sample, kind of keeping it a neutral color palette. But if your house is not gray, and let's say you want to personalize your sunny yellow house, or perhaps you have a red house or a brown house, feel free to change your colors up tonight. That's quite all right with me. You can just kind of pick and choose whatever colors you want uh, or paint the gray house with me tonight. And if you choose to paint this a second time, go ahead and then do the personalization of your home the second time you paint tonight's class. I hope you are painting along with me tonight. If you do have any questions, in the studio with me tonight is Kira Valentine, and she's going to be moderating uh, and kind of moder um, moderating and monitoring. That's what I was trying to say, uh, to watch to see if any of you have any questions. If you have questions, just shout them out in the chat, and either Kira will try and answer them or she'll pass them on to me. Now I've got one side here a little bit more brush strokey. So I'm gonna come back on this second side here that I was working in and just add more color and put a little bit more texture in the sky here. Using the large three quarter inch flat brush, you'll find that you can kind of fill this space in fairly quickly, even though you're going slow to match those edges. And like I said, I love uh, I often say I love to teach to beginners. So if a beginner was doing this and they're a little uneasy about working up next to these straight edges, that's where this idea that I gave you earlier of the painter's tape will come into play. So you can obviously kind of trim yours out with the painter's tape. If you did so and you've got yours painted like I have mine now to this point, now's when you can lift up that tape because that's really all you wanted it for was just to keep the blue out of this mat area, if you will. All right, so now I'm gonna quickly rinse that brush because I'm gonna remove the white and blue that's in that brush and I'm gonna blot it dry and set it aside. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my gray out. I am using a color called classic French gray. That's what I'm adding to my palette now. And if you do not have a medium value gray or this classic French gray, you can obviously, like I said, change the house out to the color that you want, or you can even take and put a little bit of your licorice or pure black on your palette and mix with white and create a gray of your liking. I'm gonna add another color out onto my palette and that is a beautiful bright red. This is called apple red. It happens to be my favorite of all of the reds that we make. It's such a beautiful, bright, bright color. So with those two colors, obviously I'm gonna focus in on the gray of the house first, the body of our house. So I'm using, I switched to a little bit smaller brush. This is a number 12 flat that I just grabbed. And I filled the brush by stroking up into the puddle of paint. And I'm just real quickly going to go ahead and give that house an undercoat or a base coat of my gray color. So just go ahead and begin doing that if you are painting along. Often use your chisel edge of the brush, the flat end of the brush there, to kind of scoot along the pattern lines and keep them straight, to go up and down the sides of the house, to go around the door, to go around the window. That just helps you keep the pattern plump <laughs> or in line, if you will. It's so much easier if you keep your lines nice and straight then you don't have to worry about trying to go back and fix them later if by chance you get a little off kilter. Any questions at this point, Kira? Nope, everyone's painting along. I can see them. Lots of okay, highs great. in the group. Lots of what, please? Highs, like hello. Oh. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. This is a great class. If any of you are teachers, this is a great class even to break down for children. I think this is something that People of all skill levels and all ages can learn. It's keeping it very simple, but yet it's fun because you can personalize it. You can change it up a little bit. 
even change it for the seasons too. And instead of putting the daisies around the outside on the mat, think about putting pumpkins uh, for the fall season, or think about putting little trees or ornaments or uh, Christmas balls around for the, and change up the grass obviously to snow for the winter. So this is just a fun little base uh, project that you can just tweak and change to your heart's content. All right, I am just about done with the body of my house. I'm gonna raise it up so that you can see. I'm not gonna clean the gray out of my brush. Oh, my, my door's a little crooked here. I can fix that though. <laughs> As I looked at the monitor, it was swooping in a little bit there. Um, but I'm not going to clean the gray out of my brush just yet because our little chimney up here needs to be gray. And the reason I'm going to do the gray first, when we do our chimney, which is a brick chimney, we're going to do those red bricks on top of the gray mortar. So while you still have your brush filled with the gray, just go ahead and paint in that little bit of a chimney. And again, this is where your chisel edge kind of helps. The chisel edge of your brush kind of helps you get those lines nice and straight. And then once you have the mortar there on your chimney, you can go ahead and clean your brush. I'm just kind of swishing mine in some water here on the side. And then, and then I'm going to blot that brush really well on my shop towel or paper towel because I want to use the same brush, but I want it to be fairly dry to start out with. The next color we're going to use is our apple red that we applied onto the palette. And let's go ahead and paint in the red and that would be our red door and our red heart that's up in the roof area. So on mine where my door got a little crooked there, we're just gonna maybe have to put two coats of red on just to kind of make sure I get that covered up nice and smooth. As much as I like to paint as a perfect painter, we all, sometimes have a little happy accident, right? So I'm going to straighten up my door right now. There we go. And then we'll paint the heart in the, in the uh, roof area as well. Okay, so we have a nice bright red door now. And then our heart shape in the roof. It can also, you can use your chisel edge to kind of get that nice V shape at the bottom of the heart. If you are just simply watching me, you probably notice me turning my work quite often. And that is the best thing to do to tell, especially a beginner student, don't be afraid that you have to keep your work straight right in front of you. Turn your work so that your brushes can do the best angle and the best stroke for you. And I've got my red heart now painted in. And I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to add another palette or another color to my palette. So I'm going to clean my brush and draw it, dry it well. And let's pick up a little bit of yellow. We're going to use moon yellow, which is a bright, vibrant yellow. And I'm going to put a little bit of that out on my palette. I'm also going to add another color and that is pure orange. So add a little bit of moon yellow and a little bit of pure orange to your palette. What I'm gonna do first is we're gonna let these red areas here dry and we're allowing the, the mortar of our chimney to dry before we go back and put our red bricks in. But let's focus in on this little window here. The window is actually white, but because I'm working on a white canvas and we only have an hour tonight, I'm gonna just do a little cheat and I'm gonna let the white of my canvas be the white in the window. So I'm only going to apply the moon yellow here in this upper left hand corner. So if you will think about maybe an upside down L and we're going to go <clears throat> just a little bit from the upper right corner across the top of the window and down the side. So we're kind of making like a little L shape here of the moon yellow. So I'm going to use that brush that I just I have been using. This is my number 12 flat. And I'm going to side load the brush. And that's just putting a little bit on the corner of the brush of my moon yellow. And like I said, I'm gonna go across the top of the window, keeping the yellow closest to the window 
shape itself. And it's just going to be a few little strokes across. And here's one, my first part of it. And then I'm going to bring the yellow coming down on that side. And this would be the left side of the window. And then I'm just going to pat, pat, pat to kind of soften that and let it kind of fade out into the white of the window. And that's all we're going to do to our window today. Later, we're going to come back with our little division lines and so on, but that's all we're going to do for that now. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the body of the house. Mine is dry enough. So what we're going to do, if you want to, you, you can leave your the body of your house, the solid gray, and don't put any detail on it. But on my little one here, I'm raising it up so that you can see it closer. I just did some very whimsical like siding lines. Um, and that's all done with your flat brush. I am going to put a little bit of the house color, our, our base color of my gray in the brush, just a little bit. There's hardly any paint on here. It's just enough to kind of get it wet with the gray. But I'm going to use the wicker white here. So I'm going to load now wicker white on top of that gray. So I now have a brush that has some gray in it, and it also has some white in it. And we're going to use that edge, this edge right here that we often call the chisel edge. And I'm just going to hold it up so that my brush is exactly straight out from my canvas. So for you at home, you're going to be working this way. Your brush is going to be straight up and down so that the handle of the brush is pointing to the ceiling. I won't be able to do that because you'll just see the top of my hand. So I'm going to hold mine like this so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just kind of slicing. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to go from left to right and just kind of very lightly with very little pressure, just kind of slice across my house. And I'm going to do that here or there and just very ever so lightly pick up a little bit more gray, pick up a little bit more white. This is just to give a little interest to your house. And then I'm going to come back from the right-hand side and slice from the right to the left. This is very little pressure. And I'm just putting some like siding marks, if you will. And this again is done with our gray and I'm using classic French gray and I'm also using some wicker white. And don't labor over this. It's just to give your house a little bit of texture and a little bit of character. And this is where, if you have a different color house than the gray that I'm doing, perhaps you might want to paint it a little bit differently. Maybe you might want to put some stonework on your house. But for tonight, we're just doing a quick little trick of the siding. I'm going to wash that out of my brush. And the next color I'm going to go on to now is, I'm going to see if my red, yeah, my red areas are dry enough. So on our door, and our heart. I have a little bit of shading on the left side of this door. I'm holding it up so you can see it closer. The right hand side of the door has a little bit of a highlight. And then when we study the heart, the lighter part of the heart is to the top, the two little hump parts of our heart. And then we also have some shading here along these edges here. So to create that shading, we need to add one more color on our palette for now, and that is our licorice. That's our black that we're going to add, just a little bit. And what I'm going to do to these areas, I'm going to do the shading first, and then I'll do the highlighting. So I am going to load my brush. This is still my number 12 flat by stroking into the puddle of apple red, we're using that local color or that base color first. So I'm filling the brush good and full with my red first. I've got red on both sides of my flat brush. Now to create that darker color, I'm going to just ever so slightly, now remember black is a very strong, strong color. So ever so slightly means barely any. <laughs> I'm gonna tip a corner into my black and then I'm gonna come here on my palette and stroke. And I'm gonna keep blending and keep picking up a little bit more red. 
eventually that black and the red is going to, as I'm blending and stroking here on my palette, it's gonna turn into a really pretty burgundy. So I am just for the sake of time tonight, brush mixing. If you wanted to, you could even take a little bit of your red and a little bit of your black with your palette knife and you can brush mix a little bit of a burgundy color. When all is said and done, I'm gonna have a brush that has mostly red in it. But as I pull down, you can see on this corner right here, there's just a tiny, and I'll raise my palette so you can see closer too. There's just a little bit of a burgundy on that one edge because I have mixed that black and that red together by stroking several times on my palette. So with that now kind of freshly made burgundy in that brush, we are going to now shade as we are looking at our door, it's the left side vertically down on that door. So we're just gonna give a little character to our, to our front door. And I am keeping the side of the brush that has the burgundy in it next to the left-hand side of the door. And you can see, I'm just kind of patting that color on as I'm pulling that color down on the left-hand side of the door. We're just adding a little bit of color there on the outside left side of the door, okay? While I still have my brush loaded with my burgundy and my apple red, I'm reloading on my, my palette there. Now let's think about this heart shape. So again, we're gonna shade on the left side and then up on the right side. So that V part, you know, making a V here, the bottom part of our heart is going to be shaded. So, here we go. We're going to put that on and we're going to pat that color down. So I now have shading on the left hand side of my heart. And we're going to do the same thing for the right side. So there's two different ways you can do that. You can flip your brush around so that now you're working, still pulling down. Or if it's easier for you to keep the dark color on the same side, like working on the left hand side, flip your project upside down. And now you can go upwards on the heart, creating the shading on there. So you can now trim out both sides of the V of our heart. So like I said, you could stroke down this way or you could flip the brush around and then stroke down this way. So you want to add the shading to your heart to create that outside shading on the V section, okay? Now that's all we're going to do with that shading for now. So let's go ahead and rinse our brush and we are going to squeeze it dry. And then we're going to reload the brush this time with our apple red again, the base color or the local color. And I am going to side load this into my pure orange. So I'm going to get some orange on one corner of the brush and the apple red all the way across the width of the brush. And then if you want to make it even a little bit brighter, you can then side load a little bit into your moon yellow on the same side that your orange is. So I had orange in my brush. And then on the orange side, I'm going to pick up a little bit of moon yellow too. And that will just make our orange a little bit brighter. So with this bright orange, we are now gonna on the door, come down on the right side of the door and a little bit across the top of the door. So <clears throat> I am going to start working on mine upside down because that's where my highlight color is already there. I'm going to pat that color going up the door on the right-hand side of the door, nice and smooth. And now I am going to come a little bit across the top of the door. And that is my door highlighted. I'll bring you set up so you can see. So I've got my door shadowed and highlighted. And now we're gonna highlight the two humps, the top part of our heart. So again, keeping that orange and that moon yellow to the outside of our heart, just kind of patting that on right there at the top. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit more color to do the second half. And I'm gonna try and make sure I get my heart equal in size here. There we go. Just patting that on. And I'm gonna raise mine up one more time. And now you can see that my heart is now shaded and highlighted. Let's rinse our brush. 
and let's move on. I'm sorry, did you say something, Kira? No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought I heard you say something. No. Okay. Well, let's move on to another section, and this is going to be the red brick of our chimney. So I switched down to a much smaller brush. I'm working with a small flat brush. This is a number two flat, and I'm going to raise my sample up. The brick is not lined up exactly. I mean, think about how brick is laid. You might even have a brick home. Every single row, horizontal row, is not matching up so that our mortar doesn't look like it's a straight line through all the layers of the brick. So we're going to take our number two flat brush. We're going to fill it with some of our apple red. And we're just going to go ahead and make horizontal marks here and there in this very small little chimney area. Can you all see that? So let's just go ahead and add our brick. And some of the brick can be wide. Some of the brick might only be partially a brick. And right, like I said, for every row that you do, you want your mortar to show, but maybe you want your mortar to not be uh, in the same area for every single layer or row of our brick. And I'm using a small little number two flat brush for this. If you find it easier to switch to do, here's mine if you want to see what mine looks like. If you want to switch to a liner brush or a small little round brush, you can do that. I'm going to let that set up and dry a minute. And then we'll come back and put a couple little accent colors on some of those bricks. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and paint our roof. And my roof is just nothing but solid licorice. So go ahead and use, I'm gonna use my number 12 flat brush. Black is already out on my palette and this is licorice that I'm working with. Again, use that trick of using the chisel edge of your brush to just kind of run along those outside pattern lines and or to run along the sides of your heart too. And what you're gonna do next is just simply and easily paint in your roof. Very, very easy. I often, like I've told you before, I often turn my work to make it easier for me to pull or stroke towards me. Now, one, we're gonna do a little trim work on our house, which will make it really kind of more a little taste of whimsy at the very end. And we'll be doing that with our black. So we're gonna incorporate this color in a couple other areas of our painting just before we're done. And I'm now coming along the side of the roof that has the chimney. So if by chance any of your red bricks were not clean, this is where you can clean them up a little bit. This black is like a little, this step, I should say, is like a little miracle worker. It will clean up your edges for you. And doing this, I'm, I'm using my number 12 flat brush. Sometimes people say, oh my God, that's way too big a brush for me for that area. Well, I'm going to tell you that I was taught many, many years ago to learn to use as big a brush as you can for an area because not only is it gonna help you do your work quicker, but it will also help take up more space as you are painting. So you'll find that you don't work as hard. It'll be much, much easier for you. Okay, I've got my roof kind of based in with my black now, and I'm just kind of cleaning up a little bit around my heart. And I hope you are right at that same point too. All right, let's start working on some of the outside flowers here while I'm waiting for my chimney to still kind of dry a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to <clears throat> tell you if you, this is painting too fast for you, maybe just paint one quarter, one, one of your four sides around, or maybe just paint two tonight and then try and catch up by painting the other two later at your convenience. But what we're going to do is we're going to paint these little half daisies all the way around. And we're going to start with the daisy center. So I'm going to take that number 12 flat brush. 
my daisy center is primarily this moon yellow, this bright, beautiful moon yellow. So I'm gonna load that number 12 flat brush with my moon yellow and everywhere that I have a little bit of a flower center, I am going to go ahead and paint that and fill that in. And in most cases, it's just gonna be like a little half circle. And this is another reason why I told you, I told in, the you. Very, in the very beginning, I was telling you, I attached my canvas panel onto the back of a mat board here. And the reason for that is because now I don't have to worry about getting paint on my hands as I paint each of these little half circles or semi-circles around on the edge here. So let's go ahead and paint as many of these as you feel like you've got the time to do tonight. There's no shame in only doing one side because for class time, the thing is to learn the technique and you'll always have the recording to go back and watch again. And by the way, this class is being recorded. You will be able to watch this once it's been uploaded to the Michael's YouTube channel. And nine out of 10 times, it's usually uploaded by tomorrow. So you'll just have to go back to Michael's on the YouTube and you can then search for this class. And you'll be able to watch the recording. Okay, I'm just for tonight's sake gonna get these two sides done. Now I did not paint this border white to start with. Again, I'm kind of doing a cheat tonight because our class is only an hour long and I'm allowing that canvas to be my white background here. So these little daisies are painted directly against the white of my canvas. So what I'm gonna do now, while I still have the yellow in my brush, again, this is moon yellow, I'm now going to keep the moon yellow in my brush and I am going to stroke up into a clean side of my pure orange. I don't wanna stroke up to where the red was. I'm gonna have my moon yellow in my brush and my, let me clean that and start again. I picked up some of too much pure orange. I'm gonna have some moon yellow and some pure orange in my flat brush. So I'm gonna have mostly the yellow, but still a little bit of orange. I'm gonna raise my hero up if you wanna take a quick look at it. When we look at these centers, the outside center, which is gonna be closest to where your petals are, that is all where we're gonna put this orange, not to the center of our center, but to on the outside circular part of our centers. I hope that makes sense. The orange is going out right up closest to the petals. And so I'm gonna just take my brush and again, just kind of pat, pat, pat on each of these yellow centers so that I'm putting a little bit of orange along with my moon yellow on these outside edges. And I'm gonna do another one up here. And so if you were doing this, go. Ahead, I would do all the centers um, and then do all of the shading of the centers. I would work like an assembly line since all of these daisies are all painted the exact same way. Again, I have my moon yellow and I have some pure orange on the corner of my moon yellow brush. I need to pick up a little more orange. This is just gonna make our daisy centers really bright and vibrant and cheerful. Yeah. Couple more here and then we can move on to the next step. I often use a pat, pat, pat when I'm putting the colors on rather than trying to do long smooth strokes. Just pat that on. Okay, so that's all we need to do to our daisy centers for now. What I'm gonna do is clean that out of my brush and I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush. We're gonna go back to that brush that we used for laying our brick to create our chimney. And that was a number two flat. 
And to create the petals um, on our daisies, I have both our Lick Me Blue and our White. And I'm going to load the brush between these two different colors with every other stroke. So I am going to start with some white in my brush. And again, this is a number two flat brush. This is a very small little flat brush. And I'm gonna start with some wicker white in the brush. And then I'm gonna stroke up into the Look At Me Blue. And when I do these little daisy strokes, we are starting here on the outside, stroking towards the center. We are not pulling out from the center outwards. So we are going to, uh, I'm trying to see if I had a marker here. Well, here's our, here's, I don't know if it's gonna show up well enough. Let me get more blue. Here's our half of our daisy center. Can you all see that? And what we're gonna do is we are stroking in this direction. We are not stroking in this direction, okay? We're not doing that. So what I wanna do is I want some white in my brush as well as some of the blue. Again, wicker white and look at me blue. And I'm gonna to stroke towards that center. So I'm just gonna to touch down, pull lift, touch down, pull lift. And these are very short, quick little pulls because they're very short little petals. And it's both colors. So every so often as you are stroking on, I'll do a couple here for you. As you are stroking on your petals, every so often pick up a little bit more of the color that you might be missing. You might need a little more white from time to time. You might need a little more blue from time to time. These are very simple little daisies. And I like a petal or a daisy when you see some that are intermixed. Some are darker petals, some are lighter petals. And if it helps you, another tip that I can share with you is to maybe start here in the center of a flower and do the one stroke in the center, then do one on either side outwards, then continue moving outwards. If that helps you to space them a little bit more evenly for you. So just go ahead right now that what we're doing is pick, picking up the white and the blue on our brushes, wicker white, look at me blue, and we are stroking towards the center around each of these little daisy petals, little daisy flowers. In the corners, there are two daisies that kind of connect almost. Some of your petals as you stroke them on might be a little bit heavier because maybe you used a little bit more pressure. That's okay. We want this to be a little bit of whimsy and to be a little bit of folk art. Just try and make them all the same length. You don't want them to get carried away. There's not really a lot of space because there are so many daisies around on this little project. There's not a lot of space to get longer petals. So you wanna keep them all kind of short and neat. Look at me blue and wicker white. Some of your petals are gonna be darker than others. Some of them are gonna be a little bit lighter than others. I love the variety. And I'm just gonna keep moving around to get this top part done. And then I'll share with you the next step. Another thing you could do is maybe change out and this matte area that I've left white. And then we have our bright, colorful daisies on there. Think maybe about painting that matte area a color. And maybe our daisy petals are more white uh, when you put a color behind, the white will show up better. So many things you can do with this very simple little pattern to make it your own and to be creative and to paint this project more than one time. Remember earlier I said you could turn it into a seasonal design. This little matte area that we're decorating with our daisies right now could be made into pumpkins for the fall season. You could even paint like a little wreath on the front door. So many, many things. But this is meant to be a very quick, easy, and beginner project that you could have fun with.
Okay, I've done two sides of mine. All my little daisies have blue petals and I am going to rinse that brush to remove my petals color, which again was our wicker white and our look at me blue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a small round brush. And so I like a number one liner. And what I'm gonna do with this number one liner, I'm gonna show you on my hero here, our daisy centers. If you wanna look at this one right here, can you see that there's some red dots around here on this outside edge? Mostly our red dots are heavier at the bottom. As we're looking at it this way, this being the top, this being the bottom. To the bottom, most of our daisies, very light, little bit going upwards, we're going to add little tiny red dots. And you could use the handle end of your brush. You could also use a artist stylus. But tonight, I'm going to go ahead and use my the tip of my number one liner brush. I'm going to get it a little bit of well, into water, get it wet a little bit, and then I'm going to fill it with my apple red. And I am going to use the tip bristles of this brush to do all my little dot work. And on mine here, again, it's every single daisy, but I'll just go ahead and start here. These little dots around the center are not dot, 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 dot. They're, they're more like, um, I kind of call them ditty dots every now and then. I kind of grow some dots on the flower, some dots on the center itself. You want lots of many, many little dots. I did mine bigger there on that piece so that you could see, but you want a lot of dots. And this just also kind of adds another layer of shading around the center of our daisy. So you're just taking that liner brush that's been filled with a little bit of a thinned apple red mixture of paint, and you are doing multiple dots, mostly towards the bottom, working up towards the top of each of these centers. The dots are also some going inside the center, some falling outside of the center. You kind of want irregular shape to make it more interesting. And I'm just doing this. You can see how quickly this happens. Just take the time to refill your brush every so often. We're going up the sides, across the bottom and up the sides. It, you don't want to completely circle the whole thing. And now when I get to the top of mine here, um, what I did is I just turned it on its side again. So I'm going again on the bottom and up the side. Just giving myself a little more interest on these daisy centers. And a couple more, and then we're gonna go move on to our chimney so that you can see a little extra color on your chimney, I promised. And a little bit more here on this one. All right, so that's all the, oh, I missed one. If I didn't catch it, I know y'all would catch it. All right, going up the top there. Okay, so right now that's all there is to these daisy centers. We started with the yellow, then we added the pure orange um, to shade the outside edge. We added our short little choppy petals with a number two flat brush. And we used um, the combination of the look at me blue and the wicker white. And then we're adding the little ditty dotties um, to kind of give our centers even a little bit more interest. And this is what our daisies look like when they're all said and done. The next thing I want to do is I do want to come back here to our chimney. And I'm going to go back to that number two flat brush, same brush we did for our little flower petals here. And that was the same brush that we put our bricks on. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of orange or orange plus some moon yellow on that flat brush. Not every single brick, but a few of them just need to be overstroked to kind of give you a little bit of interest in your brickwork. You know, when you look at laid brick, not all your bricks are gonna be the same 
color. There's some gonna be deeper, more burgundy. Some will have a little bit more orange cast to them, possibly even a little bit more yellow. So just on a few bricks, you wanna put a little bit of an accent color and that's all we're going to do there. Now let's go ahead and get our liner brush back out. And we're gonna start some of the fun trim work here on our piece. I love to do little whimsical paintings with black outlining. I want you to carefully look at my black outline on the house. That's where we're going to start. That black outline is not a straight line. It's intended to be a wiggly, jiggly line. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take that liner brush we're gonna put some water in it, carry some water over to where my black is on my palette and I'm using Folk Art Licorice. And with that moisture in my brush, I am thinning that paint down. We want this paint to be more fluid. Folk Art Acrylics in their natural state are so full of body and rich and creamy in consistency, but they're not good for liner work at that point in time. So we do need to thin it with a little bit of water and I'm just, after I did that, I'm touching my paper towel to remove any excess water that might be in my liner brush. And when I do line work, for those of you that might be beginners out there tonight, just the very, very tip of this round brush is going to touch the surface. And you are gonna create not straight lines. I do not try and do a straight line. Those are harder to do. And for beginners, you want to be a little maybe nervous and let your hand kind of be a little jiggly. And your, some of your lines are gonna be long. Some of your lines are gonna be short. You want to have, and I'm gonna raise this so you can see it. You want to have a very nervous hand when you do this very whimsy folk art line work. So I'm gonna show you my hero one more time. I want you to line both sides of your gray house. And can you see, I'm bringing it up really close. See those lines, they're not straight, they're not perfect. They're intended to be a, almost like a dot dash wiggly line. So hold your piece. If it's easier for you to pull towards you, do that. If it's easier for you to move from left to right, I want you to find your comfort level with line work. And everything on your painting should be a little dry now, so it's okay to put your hand down and just let those wiggly lines happen. This is gonna be a fantastic highlight or accent to your painting. I've got one side of my house done if you wanna take a look up here. So it's just a wiggly jiggly line. I'm gonna go ahead and continue now onto the second half of my house, the other vertical part of my house, side I should say, again, let your hand be a little nervous. That's quite all right. While we're doing this, we're going to also outline around the door. Again, kind of keeping it a little bit light and airy because just the tip of your brush is touching your canvas. And we're going to go across the door and down the other side of the door. Intentionally make those wiggly lines. For our window, we are going to outline the entire square box of our window. Again, very jiggly, wiggly. If you are the least bit nervous, this is perfect because your lines will not be straight. If you need to have a glass of wine to calm yourself down, <laughs> hey, somebody liked that comment. Oh, that was me, Chris, you know that. <laughs> that sometimes helps make a wiggly jiggly line too, if you'd like. This is something that's intended to be very whimsical and fun. And so once you outline the square of your window, you're gonna go ahead and add those window panes in. So right now we have outlined both sides of our house, outlined the shape of the door, We've outlined the shape of the window and added the crossbars within the window itself. If you wanna give yourself a little doorknob, I put a black heart as my doorknob um, just to make it a little bit more fun and whimsy. And what you can do if you wanna do that heart or you can just do a little circle to make a, uh, a doorknob. But if you wanna do a heart, you can make a one little circle. I know this is very small for you to see a second little circle fairly close to it, and then 
touch your brush down between the two and pull down and you're gonna get the cutest, smallest little heart. So you can put a little heart doorknob if you want on your, and that's done with our licorice and our liner brush. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about trying to draw a heart. It's just simply a little dot, another little dot next to it, and then pull those two dots down in the center and you get the sweetest little heart. Okay. All right, while we're still working with our liner brush with this thin licorice, <clears throat> let's not forget about our chimney. And so we want to go ahead and outline again, wiggly lines. Don't try and be perfect here. Wiggly lines, and you're gonna outline the entire chimney, both sides and across the top. All right. Our chimney has a little bit of a dotted line kind of indicating some smokes uh, coming out of the smokestack part of our chimney. That's all done with your liner brush and your wicker white. So I cleaned the black out of my brush right now and I'm just gonna pick up some of this white. I did not necessarily thin the white because I wanted it to have a little bit of texture and or I wanted it to be very nice and very opaque. So if you want, you can add a couple little swirls coming out of your chimney, which is more like a, a dot, dash, dot, 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 or dash, dash, dot, dash, design, kind of creating some little smokes, uh, streams, maybe if that's what you want to call them, coming out of your chimney. I did not put a pattern on my piece here to trace around. But if you need to put a pattern on, you can take, take a, even a piece of pencil and draw a little smoke stack there for you. And just give yourself some little dotted lines. And we are going to add our grass first before we add the outline trim of our picture of our box first. So we need to add a little bit of color out onto our palette for our grass. And your supply list said two different greens. You can use Thicket and Classic Green, or you can use just Thicket and we can use some of our yellow to lighten that if you wanna make a lighter green. I'll show you my heroes here in just a moment. I have actually two different greens in this row of grass that's across the bottom here. If you look, you can see some dark blades of grass and some light blades of grass, lighter green. And this is simply done with your liner brush. And we are your hero. Oh, my piece here, my finished piece is called a hero. Does that make sense now to you? Yeah, this is the piece I'm working on, but the piece that's done is what we call a hero. <laughs> okay, great. I just happened to look up and saw that question. Okay, I'm going to do my grass line work here, and it's really more kind of scribbling. I'm using my liner brush. I do have some water in it. I'm gonna carry some water over. I'm gonna do my darker green first. So that's our thicket. If you don't have thicket, sap green works beautifully for this nice, dark color too. Just like we did our black, I'm thinning that down because I want to do some line work. The grass is uh, individual strokes, but they're also kind of running together. So what I'm going to do is keep that brush up just like this with the handle pointing to the ceiling, but I'm going to turn mine from the side now so that you can see what I'm doing. I am not taking the time to pull up each individual little grass stroke. You can, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that brush straight up and down and I'm going to start here on the left side working to the right and I am going to almost like you're sketching. Can you see that that brush tip hasn't really left? I'm just kind of scratching the surface, wiggling that brush back and forth. I want some movement going to the left. I want some movement coming up, up to the right. I want some short. I want some tall. I want them in varying widths, but we're gonna go ahead and add this dark grass across the bottom here. The grass is gonna stay within our square. It doesn't come out here where the daisies go. It's gonna stay within the square. And again, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna see if I can hold it so you guys can see. Pushing up 
and wiggling, pushing up and wiggling. Some wiggles go to the right, some wiggles go to the left. I have my grass going in front of my house. So I'm going on top of the gray, filling my brush every so often. And like I said, it goes back and forth. I did not put the grass over the front door because we want it to look like you can actually open that front door without grass getting inside. <laughs> and I am, let me just bring this up so you can see close. Can you see it's just really more like a scribble. I am scribbling on this dark green, which again is thicket, using just the tip of my brush. And when I come up, I'm sometimes going to the left, sometimes going to the right. And now that I have one layer of this darker green on, I'm going to repeat this with the lighter green. And if you are not, um, I mentioned I used classic green. So I'll do that here with classic green, thin my paint down and make it more fluid so that it will flow from this liner brush. Now, if you don't have two different values of green, you can take some of your moon yellow and bring a little bit off to the side here, add a little bit of your dark green to it, and you can make a lighter value green just by adding more yellow to it. So we're going to do now another layer of our grass, just to give us a little more interest. And some of these can go a little bit higher, a little bit lower. You want to still be able to see some of the dark color through as well as this lighter green now on top. I can even pick up a little bit of yellow in my brush now if I wanted to, to kind of give me a little bit more of a lighter yellow green. Maybe it's a, a new grass here in the spring. Although some of you probably might still have some winter going on. We've had some days in the 80s here in the Atlanta area where we're from, but we've also had some cooler temperatures come back into play too. Okay, so here's my grass. I did bring a little yellow into mine. I did have the dark green, the light green. And now I'm gonna clean the green out of my brush. And I'm gonna go back with this same liner brush to our black. So that licorice that I have thinned down might need to be thinned a little bit more. And remember those black wiggly lines that we did? We are going to do those black nervous wiggly lines all the way around our square. So this is gonna separate our artwork of the house from our mat of our daisies. I'm gonna bring mine up really close so you can see. And this is the same kind of wiggly line that we did around our house, around the windows, around the doorway. Very simply done with your liner brush and your thinned licorice. And you can either, if it's easier for you to pull towards you, bring your brush down. If it's easier to pull away from you, do it that way. I often, because I'm right-handed, I, I often will work left to right. So just find your easy area, what works best for you, and just take that brush on a little nervous ride all the way around the square. And like I said, it's just the very tip of this brush that is touching your canvas. Some of your nervousness will be maybe a little bit longer stroke. Maybe some of it might be more hit or miss, shorter strokes. Here's a good example of some shorter strokes, hit or miss, and then towards the bottom, maybe I have some longer areas. And that difference there is really what kind of sets it off. You don't want it perfect. You don't want it exact. Just have fun with it. Embrace the imperfections and the whimsy. I'm going around my third side now. Once you get the hang of using your liner brush, you'll find that you can go pretty quick. And I am not putting my hand or my wrist down hard on my surface. I'm allowing that brush and with light pressure in my hand, just flow right along the canvas so that it is not a heavy pressure. I'm pulling the brush bristles with very light pressure. 
And then I have outlined my little square box now. The last thing for us to think about is to put the lettering on here. Now you may not want to put letter yours. This is totally optional. You can letter or not letter. Um, you could even change the wording out. There's no place like home to something else that you'd rather do. Maybe you even just wanna write the word home. One thing I can suggest for you is two, well, actually a couple different things. You can go back to your original pattern once this is all completely dry. Well, this is my hero, so this is dry. Let's say you painted everything and it's all dry now. And let's say you do want the lettering, there's no place like home. What you can do, making sure that it's completely, totally dry first, put your pattern back on place and then go ahead and transfer the designs using your stylist and your gray graphite and trace over these pattern lines. So you can do something like when you're tracing over your pattern lines, I'm gonna illustrate on my palette here. Let's say we're gonna do the word home. I'll see if I can do it. Is that big enough for you? Yeah, uh, do it big enough so that you can see H O M and then we have an E on the end. This style of lettering is what we often call brush lettering. And it's very irregular. A lot of times it's very more, it fits in with the style of whimsy. So when you are transferring my pattern here, where I have the word home, you can transfer just, just like this, or you can transfer the weight of each letter too. Like here is the H part, you know, on my pattern you can transfer that whole entire weight. So you can actually transfer so that you are seeing two lines. And then when you get ready to paint this, you're painting in between these two lines. I hope that makes sense. So if you want, you can transfer your pattern and transfer both sides of each single letter. So when you transfer your design, you're, it's going to look just like this. And let me raise that up so you can see it closer. You're going to see every single uh, letter, both sides of every single letter. And then when you get ready to paint it, you're going to use your liner brush and you're going to come back with your liner brush filled with your licorice. And I use this same consistency paint. You want it to be fluid. You want it to flow well so that when you get ready to paint, you're actually now going to put a little pressure and you can paint now between those two pattern lines that you transferred and you can paint the letters that way, just kind of filling in this space. If you can't do it in one long smooth stroke like that to fill in that part of the H, then take a moment and just use your brush like this and almost like you're coloring, take small little strokes and just paint in each little section. So that's one way to do the brush lettering. And if you are a beginner, that might be the easier way to do it. <clears throat> brush lettering is very fun once you kind of get the hang of it. It's learning the right amount of paint in the brush, the right consistency of paint, and it's all about brush pressure. So when you get ready to um, do your lettering, you want nice fluid paint. Like I said, I added more water to it. I've got a really nice soupy puddle of fluid black paint here. I've got licorice paint here. My liner brush is nice and full of this paint. I'm gonna tap my, um, barrel here to make sure I've got all the moisture out of the brush. And then what I'm going to do, let's say if I wanted to learn brush lettering, every single uh, letter is done one at a time. You're not going to try and paint out the whole word home. You're going to take and paint out H, then you're going to paint O, then you're going to paint M and E, one letter at a time. And one thing to think about, Every single downward stroke is going to have a lot of pressure. When you look at this piece here, this is a downward stroke. See how much fatter that stroke is versus the upward stroke. If you're going up, it's very little pressure and you're on the tip of your brush to get a skinny little line. 
to do the fat lines, you're going down. So let's just say we're going to go ahead and do the word home here on the side. I'm going, I'm going to try and do it so that you can see both pieces at the same time. You're going to start. Oh, you're getting the top of my hand. Let me turn it this way so I can hold it. Maybe, maybe this will be easier for you to see. So I'm going to keep my brush tip straight down to the surface. And I'm going to go very light pressure on an upward stroke. When I get ready to do my downward stroke, I'm applying a lot more pressure. So if I used a bigger brush, I'd be able to make a bigger line. So on this downward stroke, I came down pretty heavy. Now I'm gonna go on an upward stroke. So I'm coming from the bottom, I'm going up, downward, I'm gonna apply more pressure. And then I'm gonna start lightening up again so that you come back up to a tip. Fill my brush with more paint. I'm gonna start the letter O. It's gonna start at the top and I'm gonna stroke down. So I'm gonna go down with pressure. I'm coming up with light pressure. Notice how much thinner that brush stroke is on this side versus this side. And I would not normally stop. I just stopped to show you. If I bring it up, I can come, I'm coming down now so I can put a little more pressure on that downward stroke. So it's just learning that with every single downward stroke, you're gonna put more pressure on the brush for every single upward stroke, you put light pressure. And I'm gonna do light pressure again. And then of course you can bring it up. Oh, let's go a little bit heavier. And then I can come up to my letter E and I'm gonna go downward with more pressure. Now I'm doing this sideways and crooked so that you can see versus me doing it nice and smooth this way. But so you can either transfer your lines and then paint to fill them in or even try using this pressure to fill in the strokes like here on the outside of the E here. And I'm working with pressure between those two pattern lines or you can try doing something like this. You can even, after you have your pattern printed, maybe switch to a different color since it's printed out black, switch to the red maybe and practice your strokes on top of this. That's a good way to do it as well. So that's all there is to our class tonight. I hope you enjoyed. One last thing I did on my, uh, I'll bring my hero back up here for you, is I did sign my name. I always sign my artwork and I signed my name going up the side here, just inside the little square. So this is, there's no place like home. It's very simple. Think about all the different ways you can paint it, all the different ways you can do it. And uh, uh, Chanel, I think we can go over or straight on. Uh, do we have any last minute or any questions at all, Kira? No, no. Oh. Great class. Thank you. Everyone's loving it. Okay. Well, I want to remind everyone to please uh, follow along and join all of Plaid Crafts social media, especially our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group. I'm often there as a teacher on our Tuesdays and Thursdays Lunch and Learns along with Andy Jones. We're always there sharing all kinds of free tips and techniques and uh, painting lessons. So join us there. If you are painting along tonight or are gonna paint tomorrow on a replay, be sure and take a picture of your project, especially if you did any kind of personalizing to yours and changed your house colors and so on. Take a picture, share it in our group, Let's Paint with Plaid. Use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. And also Michaels has a couple um, hashtags too. One is Make It with Michaels and one is Michael's classes. So we would all love to see your work and help be a cheerleader for you. So I hope you enjoyed the class tonight. I enjoyed teaching you. Uh, our next Michael's class is going to be May the 2nd and Jesse Jennings is going to be our teacher for that day. You'll have fun with her. I, the class is not yet posted, I'm sure, on Michael's website. We submitted it today. So Give them a couple of days to get it uploaded and then be sure and look for May the 2nd. It'll be another Tuesday night at 730 Eastern Standard Time and you'll have fun with Jesse. So until then, I hope you all continue painting and sharing your work and posting it in our Let's Paint with Plaid group. So thank you, everybody.
Thanks, Chris.